In this video, you learn the best way to warm up on guitar. Now, warming up your fingers is really important to do, and there are a lot of exercises out there for doing this. However, they fall short. Yes, they warm your fingers up, but there is so much more we can get from a warm up session if we go about it the right way. Hi, this is Simon Candy from AcousticGuitarLessonsOnline.net, and in today's lesson, I'm going to show you the three criteria every warm up session must have so you not only warm up your fingers, but you develop and improve your skills at the same time. I'm first going to take you through some typical warm up exercises and show you why they are limiting for the time that you would invest into them and what you can do instead. Then I'll show you three examples of a warm up routine that follow the three criteria so that you are getting a lot more for the time that you invest when warming up on guitar. So let's get to it. Now there are a lot of ways that you can warm up your fingers even before you pick up a guitar and it's often good to you know sort of massage between the fingers sort of you know between the knuckles and to sort of you know get the wrists a little bit you know stretching the wrists back and, and forward. These sorts of things can certainly help. Um, massaging the, the bicep and the, the arm, that all is great for preparing to play. But a lot of the typical exercises you see out there will be sort of like uh, this one is common, playing four notes per string. And when you get up, you move down, or you move up a fret rather, and then come down, and then you move up, and so on and so forth. And you might do different combinations of the four fingers there. Another one that's uh, common is what they call the spider crawl. And that's where, you know, you can do this on any string and you play four notes in a row chromatically, and then you go to the next fret, and you keep moving up, and then you can come back down. Okay, do these warm your fingers up? Yes, they do. So excellent. You'd think, okay, good warm up routine. Well, yeah, it's a good warm up routine, but there's a lot more we can get out of our warm up. So just think about this for a moment. Let's say you practice 20 minutes a day, and let's say you warm up for five minutes. That's 25% of your practice time spent warming up. Now, these exercises here do warm your fingers up, but that's it. They're not got, they don't have any musical value. There's nothing you can do musically with them. And I'm pretty sure once you've warmed up on these for even just a, a day or even less, even just in a single session, you're going to pretty much click off up here and not really think and really engage your brain with your fingers so much. So yes, they warm your fingers up, but they sort of stop short there. When we think about practicing and we think 25 or even let's just say 20% of your practice time is spent warming up, wouldn't you like to warm up with something that also improves your playing? Because we're talking about 20% of your time. You might think, well, that's not much in a 20 you know, minute session, four minutes, but over a month, six months, 12 months, that's a lot of time. I mean, it's 20% of your time. That's good. I mean, warming up is important, but there's so much more we can get from warming up. So that 20% gives us much more return for our time invested. So the three criteria, what are the three criteria that I'm talking about? Well, one is obvious, it's warming up your fingers. Two, something that engages your brain with what your fingers are doing. And three, make sure what you're using to warm up has musical value. So let's just break those down. So warming up your fingers, that's pretty obvious. However, if you choose something that is challenging, then that's probably like really challenging, then that's probably not the thing to warm up on. Okay, if it's a new scale or a new riff or part of a song you're just starting to learn, because you won't really move your fingers all that much across the four or five minutes that you warm up. But at the same time, we you know, want to engage our brain. The second criteria here, criteria number two, is engage your brain. So when you do these sorts of exercises, you're going to click off pretty quickly and just go into autopilot and yes, warm your fingers up. But you're not engaging your brain with what your fingers are doing. And so as a purely a warm up routine, that's okay but we can warm up on something that does also engage our brain and improve our skills. And number three, it has to have musical value. So that means it's something that you could use to create music. There's not too much musical value in these things, okay? Or the spider crawl going up. But if you were to use a scale or an arpeggio or a riff or something, that's got more musical value. So it doesn't have to be sounding musical or being used in a musical way necessarily when you're warming up with it, but it's something you could take and warm up on. So I'm gonna take you through three examples of a warm up routine that use 
and uh, apply each of these three criteria. So warm up routine number one, here's an example. Instead of playing these four note per string mindless things, how about a scale sequence? Okay, a scale sequence is musical, it's going to be using a scale shape, it's going to be getting you to play through a scale in a uh, musical way if you like, or potentially a musical way. So let's say for example we take a three note per string scale, let's take this one here, okay, and let's say I'm going to use that to warm up and I'm going to play the interval of a third, a third sequence. So that would be this. And I would come back down. Okay, now if you can do that pretty easily and you can click off as you do it, then yes, it's musical and it's going to warm your fingers up, but it's not really engaging your brain. So what you need to do is you need to adjust it. Okay, and there's a couple of things you could do. You could either just take the same sequence and play it on a scale shape that's not as familiar. So maybe the next one up. Etc. Okay, so it re-engages your brain. So you might find this engages your brain for, I don't know, a few warm-up sessions, but then it starts to, you can feel yourself going into autopilot. Now that's good because you've developed your skills, right? You've improved your skills as you're warming up. But we're now dropped one of the criteria. We're now not really needing to engage our brain as much. So we move it up to a different position different scale position and we apply the sequence again. Now another way would be to either do a completely different sequence, you could do four, six, I mean it's, it's endless. However, you could also take the thirds and you could, instead of ascending each third, so it's ascending, I mean it's ascending the scale, but your the third interval is the low note, then the high, low, then the high note, low, then the high note, low, then the high note. You could alternate that. You could go low to high, high to low low to high, high to low. So instead of, you get, okay, and it really will engage your brain again to um, connect with what you're doing with your fingers. So another example of a warm-up routine that's going to warm up your fingers of course but also engage your brain and develop your skills and has musical value is perhaps you could do some sort of finger picking pattern. For example, if you're working on like the Travis picking pattern, let's say. So you could sit on a on a static chord and just practice the pattern and warm up the fretting uh, the picking hand fingers rather. Okay, with the Travis picking pattern. So it's certainly got musical value. It's warming up your picking hand. And if it's something that you need to think about, it's not automatic, then that is good too. If it isn't, if it's automatic, then alter the pattern to something. Often you only have to change one thing. I'm not talking about changing something so you're starting from scratch again and having to, you know, that's not going to be good. You just really only need to change one little element to re-engage the brain. So we could do a some sort of Travis picking pattern. If you want to get this hand moving a bit with some chords, then you could do it across several chord forms. I'm just using little block chords here, up the neck. Okay, I have a video on that exact chord type. I'll link to the in the top right corner right now if you want to check out that particular chord. But that's not the point that we're making here. It's I want you to see the concept here and learn the concept. Don't worry about my exact examples. You could have something completely different. Just always remember, warms the fingers up, engages the brain, improves your skills. They're the three criteria for any warm up session. Okay, so you could do something like that. Or if you're not a finger picker, maybe you take uh, like a chord and you practice some sort of um, chordal picking pattern. And you know, targeting the strings, warming up, getting your radar in there. If it's mindless, make a slight adjustment. Okay, you could also do it across a couple of chords, right? You could put a chord change in there. 
cord, several cords. Now you might think, okay, that warm up routine's okay, but this hand's not doing that much. Well, you can combine these things, right? So you might do a warm up session where you do a little bit of a finger picking pattern for a couple of minutes, and then you do a bit of a scale sequence. So you sort of cover in both hands equally, if you like. So you can do that. You, again, it's the concepts here, not my exact examples that are important. Another example of a warm up routine would be to do a little bit of improvising. So you're working on your improvising skills, your ear, and you know, this is certainly gonna touch on the um, musicality side of things, that it has musical value. For example, I'll put a backing track on here, right? Just a simple two chord backing track. So you could have that playing and you could just practice some improvising. Maybe you take the sequence and play it over the track. So you're working on the sequence, warming the fingers up, but also hearing it musically. Okay. Or you could try and take that sequence and play it a little more musically. Or maybe you want to work on pentatonic scales, so you play the pentatonic scale over the track. Or maybe you want to work with some arpeggios, so you work with just simple arpeggio patterns over the track, something like this. Got the G chord there, G7, so we've got a D minor. G7 D minor again G7 Okay, any sort of thing that you want to improvise with Maybe you just want to play freely and do whatever you like Maybe you got a riff That you want to practice and play in various ways. To quickly summarize, when we warm up, yes, we want to warm up our fingers, but if we just do these mindless exercises that do warm up the fingers, we are missing out on getting more for the time we invest. And we all know practice time is precious and we want to get the most out of it that we can. We want to make sure that any warm up session warms up the fingers engages your brain so you're improving and is something that has musical value. And you, these are just examples I've shown you today. You could do completely different things as long as they tick those three boxes, those three criteria. If you would like help with your finger picking, the kind of help that gets you results in the most direct, efficient, fun way possible, then check out the Ultimate Finger Picking Guitar Course, a complete system for finger picking acoustic guitar, so simple even a beginner can learn it. I've carefully designed this course to do all the heavy lifting for you as far as knowing exactly what to do, how to do it and when to do it in regard to mastering the art of finger picking guitar. All you have to do is follow the pathway I've laid out for you. In the Ultimate Finger Picking Guitar course, you will learn and master all the key concepts, methods, strategies, and techniques needed for finger picking. So you'll never put your guitar down in frustration again, thinking, how the hell do I do this? You will also discover the exact order in which to do things, avoiding the all too common mistakes most people make when learning to finger pick guitar, saving you precious time and frustration. Have your hand held every step of the way with the ultimate finger picking guitar course. It will take you from wherever you are at right now with your finger picking to where you would like to be. Enjoying every part of the process along the way. So click the link in the description below the video and check out the ultimate finger picking guitar course. Let me know in the comments below this video what acoustic guitar topics you'd like to see covered in future videos. I read all the comments, I'll do my best to reply to them. Don't be shy, drop me a line. I'd love to hear from all of you. If you like this video, then hit that like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Now, my analytics tell me that uh, about 80% of people who watch my videos are not subscribed. You might see videos pop up in your feed because you've watched videos of mine before, but this does not necessarily mean you are subscribed to the channel. So if you like the videos, subscribe to the channel, 
hit the notification bell button and YouTube will tell you every time I've released a new video, which is every single week. Thank you so much for being here. This is Simon Candy from AcousticGuitarLessonsOnline.net. As always, I really do appreciate you checking out my videos and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.